definitely gotten a lot of responses that are, uh, you know, pretty wild, um, particularly yeah. because Ian and I do a lot of conventions or we used to, you know, Comic-Con and stuff like that. We've been asked that question many times over the last decade, you know, why did it, why does it resonate? I do think that um, there was something about being different in the world, you know, the, the sort of... Um, the outcast. The, yeah, the brothers are, are different. They're outcasts or they're... they're they're not part of the, you know, the main sort of what I, I think, I think people related to that kind of like being the, being the outsider, being different. Um, and then I also think there was that kind of the danger, um, the temptation. you know, it, it, Elena was this like innocuous sort of, you know, base, you know, basically uh, innocent little girl. And then by the end of it, she was like, you know, you know, sucking on blood and, Burning you know, down I, houses and killing people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so I do think like that journey, that, that metamorphosis was so fascinating to people. Hey guys, I'm Paul Wesley. Um, on the Vampire Diaries, I played Ian's more intelligent, uh, better looking, um, uh, brother, Stefan Salvatore. You forgot intelligently superior. That's what I meant. Yeah. What's up, everyone? I'm Ian Summerhalder. Um, in the Vampire Diaries, I played the ridiculous and relentless Damon Salvatore. And I am so grateful to be here. So thank you for listening to us say just a bunch of dabble. I think if I had to choose one of the characters I played, uh, you know, I, wa I watched Ian get all the great lines. I was always the good guy, and I watched Ian get all the great lines. He was always getting the sassy lines. He was always In getting- season one, I did. That was it. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying. So yeah, you, got yeah, to, yeah, yeah. you got to, you got to, you know, be the bad guy. I was always the good guy. And so there, you know, I was a little bit envious, frankly. Um, so when my character took a turn and became the bad guy, the, the Ripper, I just want one taste. That's all I need. I just want one taste. One taste. That for me was, you know, I was super excited to do something different and to sort of like, you know, um, get a little, get a little messy and 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 create some flaws in the kind of the archetype of that perfect uh, character who was always doing the right thing. So that was probably the most fun for me. What was it like playing Damon Salvatore? This was the job of a lifetime. Uh, they don't come around ever. And so it was the, it was the greatest professional joy. I mean, and, 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 and a, a life experience that is pretty much second to none. Damon really was, uh, one of the most fun people you could find on TV for season one. And then he decided to grow a heart. Stefan has to come in and there are other elements that have to come in and become bad. And, but Damon was always fiercely loyal to the people he loved. I had friends, I had a family, and that's it. You still do? No. But you do. When I remember when that whole Rose thing came in, I remember talking to Paul about this. I was so pissed. I was like, he's supposed to cry and he loves her. And he's like, suck it up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Deal with it. You become the, you know, sappy romantic. Yeah, I'll give you some lessons in sappy. <laughs> and I'll give you some lessons in brooding and sap. Yeah. But, you know, Peter Roth, a great mentor to us all, who ran Warner Brothers the Studio for many, many years. He said, "Listen, kiddo, this is this is a this is an arc. You know, this is about being a unique creature and the marathon. It. It's not a sprint. Not a sprint. Can't be a one trick. Can't be a one trick pony." But I think the relationship between the brothers was the the most important one. And so for me, I think the thing that stands out immediately is the final scene. I mean, you know, the final scene ended on the two brothers hugging. Damon, hello, brother. That to me was a really powerful moment because it was the, 
last thing we ever shot. It was the final moment of the, you know, they intentionally made the last uh, uh, scene of the series, the last scene that we shot on the show. And uh, it was, was just a powerful. really, it that was, was a, a powerful and cathartic powerful. moment. To me, that stands out the most, I would imagine. Yeah. Actually, you're right. That is the, I mean, even just as a man, as a, as a human being, that was a very cathartic moment because it was the end of this entire era of our lives. Yeah. Uh, every, every scene, every setup, every story, every page of that script culminated to this one moment that was going And they were like, cut, and then it was like, Oh, that's it that's that it was really it was really special but i also too remember you know there's a famous photo it's i could say famous because it's everywhere now of you me and marco siega on the rooftop in episode two oh, i remember that one where i you know i remember that moment of literally sitting there with marco siega on the rooftop in the summertime in georgia and i remember that day literally that moment like it was literally right now and that was 11 years ago in july 11 years we were lucky well well man we spent a lot of um we spent a lot of time a lot of night shoots and a lot of freezing day freezing nights and a lot of really hot days and it's pretty wild isn't it and then also a lot of beautiful perfect summer georgia evenings you know just sort of like sitting there excuse me sitting there together just running lines and you know sipping a you know, iced tea in the summertime in Georgia and just looking at each other going, wow, what the hell are we doing uh, in the middle of a field in Georgia at three in the morning? Um, but we all had each other. We, Paul and I, remember we moved in next to each other. Uh, in season one, we had apartments next to each other. Yeah, because we wanted to run lines. Um, we wanted to be really we, close to each other. Right. This was before Zoom and FaceTime and all that kind of crap. You know, it was like we wanted to be in geographical proximity to one another. Um, yeah, we we're very committed to it. I, you know, I'd never been into the South, frankly. Like, you know, obviously I'd visited here and there, but I'm a Jersey guy. I never, you know, we shot the pilot in Vancouver. Suddenly the show is in Georgia. And then it's like, you know, you're moving to Georgia. You're away from all your friends and family, and you know, and you know, so you only have one another, right? It's the cast and the crew, and it's like a big sleepaway camp in a sense. And so you really form this kind of like family, um, this relationship, this bond with with one another, um, which is um, which I think would have been not the case if it was in L.A. or New York or something, you know. This show um, never would have been the hit. This show would not have been the hit it was had this been in L.A. Yeah, 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 never, probably, yeah. Never yeah. yeah, we had each other. Look, here's the last thing I'll say about that. I mean, here, here's a television show. Here's a group of young actors. And by the way, I was the old man of the group. I was 30. They were all in their mid to early 20s. And but we would shoot, you know, Paul and I spent literally 50, 60 hours together. And then a lot of weekends, we ended up traveling every weekend together for press and stuff. And so we'd spend anywhere between 50 to 80, 100 hours a week together. But on those times when we didn't travel, or even in the end of the night on like a Thursday, if we wrapped early enough, but even on a Friday night that became Saturday morning, which we called Friday days, we would all still end up, the cast and the crew, sometimes 60, 80 people would end up at the same bar together just to be together and share a cocktail together and hoot and holler in the Georgia summer you know, nights. And that was really special. The amount of times and the amount of screen grabs I have of Stefan and Damon bonding over a bourbon and sitting like, you know, there's this great shot of us like on, on the steps or whatever. And we're just like, like cheersing. And, yeah. you know, it's so cool to be able to like recreate that in a sense, you know, this yeah. is our reunion. The, yeah, well, right. the company we created together, our brothers bond. That's our, that's our, that's my, that's, that's our reunion, you know, for me anyway. You know, we both love bourbon. Um, it's and like 10 years, it's like 10, literally like a decade in the making. Yeah. And so when the show ended, we had a little bit more time on our hands. And um, specifically this last year has been a real kind of transformative year in the sense that we've really worked every single day. Um, and so, you know, this is something that we wanted to do forever. Um, and it was really about putting the right team together, uh, finding the right mash. 
um, creating, cre coming up with the name, coming up with the label, finding the bottle, the shape, the that. I mean, everything, this is our creation. You know, this is a real passion and we needed to commit the right time. We didn't have the time then. And, and I think now it's a little bit, this was just the right time to do it. I always say that, you know, Ian and I, I think the reason the, the show was successful and I think the reason why we were able to create this company so, so I think uh, efficiently is because we are polar opposites in a sense. Um, I'm an eternal pessimist. I'm always think everything's doomed. I think everything is gonna, it's the end of the world. Ian's like, everything's amazing, eternal optimist. And I do think that the two support one another in a sense, you know, yeah. there is a kind of an alchemy there. And I, and I, I can find myself getting into like my, my pessimism and he lifts me up and then I can sort of bring him back to reality. reality. So, yeah. And so it's a nice blend. And I think for me, that's my thing that I've sort of learned is like, sometimes it's good to, to be in a relationship, whether it's a romantic or if it's business, with someone who maybe you guys can present different things to one another in different perspectives. It's so funny. We're living the the Damon Stefan <laughs> reality, but now uh, in business together with something that we're so passionate about. For us, the name is Brothers Bond, but it's really that's just the the sort of um, I suppose the, the 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 small iceberg tip of the iceberg. The rest of it is it's a community. We want to build a community, and we want. Uh, people to have bonds with one another. We want you to form your own, you know, sense of community and your celebration, whether you're having a drink with your family member or your uh, wife or husband or your best friend, whatever. It's, that's for us, that's the ethos of the company. And that's what we hope to really exude and really, uh, um, I think for people to experience when they sort of are introduced to our brand. I think hopefully well, we're doing that. I remember when I auditioned for the Vampire Diaries, I I get like I always pretty like take 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 things seriously if I like them, but I remember being like I don't know this one feels different. <laughs> Something's different about this one. But again, eternal pessimist. I was like, yeah, it's probably just my you know. And I remember uh, me and Ian being on the plane on the way to Vancouver and me being like, man, do you think? So like, do you think to go shoot the pilot? I was like, you think it's going to be successful? You think we'll get picked up? He was like, oh, yes. Oh, yeah. And I remember being like, this guy's I'm like, are you out of your mind, dude? Like, I was like, this, guy, I don't think this guy's full of it. You know, this guy's full of it. And then sure enough, you know, he was right for once. Um, for once, and, yeah. yeah. We hit it at the exact moment in time where Twilight had just struck big and television was turning into its golden age remember that was just the beginning of hulu and, and amazon yeah. and uh, netflix and it all just started and also too what it was, was happening social in social media social media it was pretty wild i mean now i say this as a married as a like married guy with kids a, a kid a, a child the the response was unbelievable i remember being in london before we'd even launched. I remember my dad was with us and your mom was with us. We were in that van. We were trying to leave the hotel and there was like a thousand people uh, on either side of this little hotel where we used to stay all the time. And we had to go through secret entrances and we had multiple cars, two dummy cars, one we were in, one we weren't, one for full security. And, and the guy at the time who was the head of Warner Brothers International just said, I have the only time I've seen this like this was the launch of Beverly Hills 90210, believe it or not, which back then was huge. And we got out of the car and people were going insane. And I went, oh, what? I didn't, I thought it was for someone else. It was like, is someone behind us? Or, and we realized, okay, this is sticking. This is, these are not lost fans. These are vampire fans who are here and they want to say, that uh, that they love us, and that's pretty amazing. And that's when Paul and I looked at each other and we went, "Whoa, dude!" We this say this in humility, by the way. No, and all no, no, literally in, in humility. reflection, like, in reflection. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, in like a reflective, uh, you know, introspective way, which was this the layering of the 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 danger and the wisdom and the sexiness of vampire guy or vampires and the ostracized outsider um that allure all layered up into this perfect sort of cake that 
that the market really just wanted at the time. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.